author, speaker, or service provider who is afraid of speaking on camera? Join the Confident Video Star Nation to overcome your fear. Connect with other professionals, gain access to exclusive resources, trainings, and tools, and learn the skills to become a confident video star. Join now and start your journey to success. Go to Facebook and type in Confident Video Star Nation and join the nation today. What is up, everyone? What is up? What is going on? How's it going? This is Carl Elian, and we're live. We are live, and we're going to talk about some cool things today. Coachaholics, 10 ways to insta coolly or coolify your Instagram game. Coachaholics, that's you and me, 10 ways to insta coolify your Instagram game. If you don't know, I'm Carl Aline, and welcome. It's great to have you here on a on an afternoon, a Saturday afternoon. We're going to talk and chop it up a little bit and talk a little bit about some topics. Actually, one topic in particular. We're going to talk about Instagram. But before we do, I want to welcome you, and I want you to let me know where you are chiming in from. Where are you chiming in from? Are you chiming in from Texas, California, or Africa? Where are you chiming in from? Let me know. Let me know. I'm excited to be on here with you, and we're going to talk about Instagram, Instagram, Instagram. And for those who don't know, my name is Carl Allen. I'm a certified coach, and I'm a performing artist. And I've been a performing artist for a while. Whew. Every time I say it, I, blow, I, I get blown away. 33 years. 33 years. Isn't that something? Oh, my goodness. Jeff, Arizona. Bring it, bring it. I'm bringing it. I'm bringing it. So I'm excited today. So I'm taking a little detour. Well, not really a detour. It's a little different today because my screen that I usually have in front of me is acting up today. So I'm going to have to look down a little bit. Um, well, maybe a lot, a little bit. And then we'll be talking. But I'm going to talk face to face with you just like this. So I'm going to look you in the eye. All right. So um, yeah, let me know where you're chiming in from. Bring it in, bring it in. Get in, get, 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 get in, get in the room. Hey guys, by the way, um, I just want to let you know about my morning. So this morning I taught two dance classes. I did some movement coaching and it was a lot of fun and uh, we had a blast. And then now I'm doing a live and then later on I'm doing a performance because I'm still performing here and there and I got to keep my chops up, you know? And um, every time I perform, I'm always taking in data information on how I can help people too. So I use performing arts and I use it as a parallel when it comes to camera confidence. So I'm um, really excited. So I got this cool bow tie. You guys see my bow tie? It's really cool. So this is this is the thing. This is what it does. I want to share it with you. So check this out. You ready? Bam! Ha <laughs> ha! It's not just that. It has different modes. I thought I'd share this with you. Isn't isn't this cool? I'm a bow. I am a bow tie guy. I got wood bow ties. I have. Uh, light up bow ties. I have Lego bow ties. Can you believe that? Lego. And I have actually even um, fur bow ties. <laughs> so I thought I'd share this with you. It's pretty cool. Isn't that cool? How cool is that? Anyway, so again, my name is Carl Aline and I, I've been a coach for over. You like that? <laughs> you love it? Shelby loves it. Hey, Shelby. How you doing? I see you, Jeff. I see you, Shelby. Get, 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 get in the room. Yes. So yeah, Carl Aline, I've been a um, performing artist for 33 years, over 33 years. I have experience as a performing artist, a talent agent for Triple Threats. And that's been a, that was a cool journey too. And that was where I worked in New York City with my talent agency. And I worked with you know Triple Threats. So people who were actors, people who were models, people who did theater, people who did commercials, people who were choreographers, people who were movement coaches, dancers, artistic directors. <sighs> It was it was a blast, and that you know at some point I'm pretty sure I'll be sharing that journey with you as well. Um, but that comes into uh, my experience and what I do, and I use all of my experience when it comes to confidence on camera. I've been able to help celebrities like Brooke Shields, Brendan Fraser, Ken Jeong, um, and I was a movement coach, and um, I was able to help them be able to present themselves on camera with movement, and that was an ex those were exciting experiences as well. And also, I have 18 years of online marketing experience as well. So today, we're going to talk about Instagram. I had a few of you uh, talk about, hey, can we, can we talk about Instagram? They had questions about Instagram. And I'm like, you know what? Would it be helpful if I talk a little bit about it? And so 
with today, we will talk about it. But my goal, my goal is to be able to help set you up for success, to help you to get to take action in some some capacity. So that is the goal. Um, so really excited about that. And this is what we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about, are you missing something? And I'm going to get into that as well. That's like a hook for you, a hook to hook you in. Are you missing something before you start with Instagram? Or even if you have Instagram now, are you missing something? We're also going to talk about unlocking the secrets of Instagram's history. We're going to talk about the history because it's important to know about the history. We'll talk about the purpose of Instagram and we'll talk about discovering uh, what you can post to up-level your coaching business. That's important because we got some coaches in the house. Isn't that right? And we'll also talk about the Reels game. I, I saw, I saw Shelby, I saw your post about Reels. I didn't get to, I saw, I sifted through the questions. You might have to type it in here. I'll try to switch over if I can. Um, but those are some fantastic questions. We'll try to answer those questions as well. And then also we'll talk about graphics. Are they still relevant? They are still relevant. And we'll talk about Instagram stories. Um, leveraging collaborations, and we'll talk about hashtags. Do they still work? Do they still work? We're going to talk about that. I'm going to talk about how to confidently leverage the camera on Instagram to reach your audience. That's important if you want to reach your audience, if you want to reach your, your avatar. And we'll talk about engaging your audience. And then I actually, I have a little practical stuff for us to do. So um, I'll ask you if you can. If you can make sure that you're doing it, if you're looking at this via your laptop and then have your phone handy, because I want to do a practical with you. All right. We're going to get a little, I like to get active. Actually, and right now I'm sitting down. Can you believe that? Usually I love to stand up because I love to express myself. And that's, that's how I roll. I love to think of my feet too. But since my screen's acting up, I'm going to sit down today, but I'll still be energetic. <laughs> so let's get into it. Let's get into it. So are you missing something? Are you missing something? So here's what I, what do I mean by that? Here's what I mean. So here's the disclaimer. This is a disclaimer for you. So if you want to get on Instagram or if you're already on and you want to be able to post and, and get engagement and really maximize your Instagram, here's a disclaimer for you. And this is a, is a disclaimer for any platform that you're on, basically. You want to be able to make sure that you know your avatar, your ideal customer your target audience. It's important because you need to know, because here's the deal. If you don't know who your target audience is, if you don't know who your avatar is, you might be barking up the wrong tree. You might be climbing up the wrong ladder. You know, it may not be the ladder of success for you. So well, no matter what you do, you have to make sure that you are understanding who your ideal customer is, who your avatar is. That's what I mean by avatar for those who don't know. You probably know, but for those who don't know. but not just that, you also have to understand where they are hanging out at. Where is your avatar spending time? Because you want to know that because you want to go where they're at. Now, here's an example. If Let's say if I was a base, no, not baseball, let's say basketball, NBA basketball coach. So I help, as a coach, I help players to get into the NBA. I scout them. I help them to get into the NBA. And if I go would I or would I go? Let me rephrase that. Would I go to a baseball field? Would I go to a hockey rink? No, I'm gonna go where the base the basketball players are hanging out at their practices, the gyms, um, basketball courts. I'm gonna do whatever it takes, even when I look online, it's gonna be all about basketball. So it's the same thing when you deal with the platform. When you're on a platform, you have to know hey, is my avatar hanging out here? And so, okay. Cool. I understand that, Carl. Okay, what, is, what does that mean for me? So what that means is, or how can I find that out, is what you can do is you could ask your ideal customers. Ask your audience, where do you hang out at? What's your favorite platform? That's the best way because that's like some really cool market research. Like here, And here's the thing. With market, that's market research. And with market research, it's way easier than it was 15, 20 years ago. Like I had to pay people. And I had to wait a week or two weeks to get the information. But now what you could do is direct, you could talk directly to your ideal audience, you know, um, friends or people that you know who are, who are who are looking to be coached by you or looking to receive your services. You could ask them directly. How cool is that? How cool is that? So I want you to think about that. 
Where's my audience hanging out? Where's my avatar hanging out? How can I connect with them? Let me get that data for them. Where, where are you hanging out? What's your favorite platform? That's what you want to do. You want to find out. So that is my disclaimer. So that's what I mean when I say, are you missing something? Are you missing that key ingredient? Because without that key ingredient, you run the risk of not being successful. You have to have that dial in. Well, that's another topic. You have to keep dialing it in. You have to keep dialing in for your avatar and understand who they are. But that's for another topic for another day. Uh, does that make sense? Let me know. If that makes sense, type in sense. I want this to be interactive as well. I'm all into that. And while you do that, I'm going to get my water. I showed you my bow tie. Now I'm going to show you my water bottle. Since I do dance, I, I, I have a big bottle. <laughs> So you do want to understand, you want to know where they're hanging out at. So also, here's the next thing. You want to unlock the secrets of Instagram's history. So why do I say this? It's important to understand the history because if you don't know where something comes from, it's hard to understand where it's going. And where Instagram comes from or where Instagram's going is important because the more you know, the more you can follow the rules. And the algorithm rewards you according to the rules. So you want to find out. So here's the deal. Founded in 2010 by Kevin Systrom and Mike Krager. It blown up over the last decade to become one of the most influential social media platforms, as you know. And in 2012, here's the thing. Facebook acquired Instagram for one billion. That's right. Billion dollars. Enabling deeper integration um, with this, you know, this advertisement platform. So basically, face, Facebook got more land, basically. Um, online land, you know, so it, and that's a whole other topic as far as ads and stuff like that. But that's important to know because what that means is Mr. Zuckerberg, he owns it. And there are some rules you have to follow. It's important to understand that. So that's a little history for you. Um, that's, you know, and then the next thing is you want to understand the purpose. You know, now understand where it came from is important, but you want to understand that purpose. What is the purpose of Instagram? Because if you don't understand the purpose, you're just going to be looking at the platform and you might you want to post on it. You want to get content out there, but you want to understand um, its vibe. It's, I like to say vibe because I'm, I'm an artist. It's vibe. It's beat. It's 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 community, you know, and it's important because Instagram is different from Facebook and and the other platforms. So you want to understand that the purpose is to showcase your artistic expression and creativity to share short videos and images on stories uh, or story features. And th by the way, those disappear within 24 hours. And you want to be able to interact with other users through likes and comments and direct messages and tagging. That's important as well. But there's a way to do it because you don't want to spam um, people that you're trying to reach. And so those are some ideas to think about as far as, you know, what its purpose is. You know, you want to follow the rules because the, the, the algorithm rewards you. So that's that's the purpose of it, you know. So it's more on the artistic side. It's like the pictures, and you know, you have re you have pictures and reels and stories. You have live videos. You have graphics. You have carousels. You have memes. I'm gonna share my screen shortly too, just to give you an idea of and show you my page actually to see what that looks like, and we could kind of go through that a little bit as well. All right, how you doing so far? Are you with me still? If you're with me, say with you. Type in with you. All right. So what I'm going to do right now is I am going to share my screen. <laughs> Let's go. Take that journey with me. <laughs> and so here's my screen. So with my screen, you have different areas. So I'm going to make sure this you can see the whole thing. I believe you can. Can you guys see that? If you can see it, say, I can see it. You might be like, can you see it? Can you see? Oh, there we go. Hey. With me, with me. Thank you. Thanks for being with me. Let's go. Let's go. So that's my page. I'm going to put this in another window, actually, right here. That way you can see it. Oh, you can see my mouse, too. So I'm going to go through. So that's my profile picture, as you can see. Um, this is my name. 
And to let you know, all trans, full transparency for me, my focus with what I'm doing, since I'm doing coaching, I have, I have, um, I'm building my Facebook group right now. So my focus has been on Facebook, you know, because, and we'll talk about that a little bit too, because Facebook has reels, Instagram has reel, TikTok has its videos, YouTube has its shorts, and people post on, we, I do too, but people put videos on LinkedIn as well. But here's the thing, all of these platforms, are competing with TikTok because TikTok is hot. You know, even though there's a lot of stuff in the news right now with TikTok, it's still hot. There's still competition and TikTok has been leading the way. So for Instagram, this Instagram Reels, right? I'm going to talk about that. So this is an example of Reels. So what I do is I have my podcast. I have excerpts. Here's my, my most recent podcast episode. I'm going to play that for you. So I would say that the first thing that you got to do is just practice. Mm. So that's that. A lot of fear just comes. I'm not going to get into all of it because for the time frame that we have. And then I also put up regular videos, like videos that might show videos of of. of being confident on camera. If you notice, my face is not showing on this particular video. Ah. So for those who think, hey, you know what? My face needs to be seen. I don't want to be seen. You can do videos like this where it's just showing them. It's just giving the message. You can do a video where you're talking and then the video showing in the background. There's more editing work. You might have to bring it to an editor or edit yourself, but you don't have to show your face. It is cool to show your face, though, to be honest, because people get a chance to know you and you get to build that rapport with them. So these are some reels. And you, if you notice, it has that logo right here. That's that, that's for the reels. Now, with the reels with Instagram, those it it changes often, not often it changes. But right now, the reels are really hot. But at the same time, on Instagram, graphics are coming back as well, because there was a time where. It was all about the reels, all about the reels, all about the reels. But the graphics are pretty hot as well. So when you think about posting on, on Instagram, try to mix it up. Think about doing reels. Think about doing graphics. You know, you could also do carousels. And I know I have some carousels on here. I haven't done a carousel in a while. Woo! Here we go. Here's my carousel. So this is a carousel right here. When you click on it and you click that icon, that arrow icon, you just go through it and you get a message. And it's cool because that keeps people on this particular post. It keeps people on the platform ultimately. So if people are sliding in or are, are sliding through or are scrolling through. And that's what Instagram wants ultimately. They want people to stay on the platform. They don't want people just to look at it, scroll, and then move on to another platform. If you could keep your audience on and keep them engaged, that's that's a plus. That is a plus. So that's no, those are the type of plat, those are the type of uh, posts that I do. I do reels, I do graphics, I do carousels. I got to get back to it. I got to get back to my Instagram page, y'all. I'm still doing my um, and I'll share with you guys too. By the way, I'll share with you all what platform I use to put out content because it does get busy. It does get hectic. We're busy. We're doing a lot of things. But if you can have a third party app that could schedule. Your post to go out, that's super helpful. I think, Shelby, I think you asked me a question about that as well. So that is my Instagram page. That's right. YouTube has shorts. Yes, YouTube has shorts. YouTube's pretty cool too. And here's the thing. At the end of the day, whether it's Instagram, whether it's Facebook, whether it's YouTube, um, at the end of the day, it's kind of going to go back and forth. It's a competition between each platform. The benefit for us, the cool thing for us is that we get a chance to benefit from it. We get a chance to use these platforms. But I want to encourage you, don't feel like you have to be on every single platform. You want to focus on one. And I know you all were talking about Instagram, so I wanted to uh, dive into that a little bit today. So that is my page. And that kind of gives you a little insight. Is that helpful? Type in helpful if that's helpful. Appreciate y'all giving me that feedback. Yeah. So cool. So cool. And so, yeah, we have the reels. I talked about the carousels. I also talked about live videos. And we'll talk about that a little bit a little, a little bit later, too, because live videos is different. 
Reels are hot, carousels are hot, but people do live videos as well, and those two pretty well. And by the way, this live I'm doing right now, I'm using StreamYard. And with this StreamYard, it's it's broadcasting to Facebook, it's broadcasting to my Facebook and my yeah, my Facebook page, my YouTube page for your brand express, my Carl Aline um Facebook page, business page, and also my confident video nation um Facebook group. So those are the three. So it but something like that would not go onto Instagram. That's the only thing about Instagram. You, you, you're not able to do that right now. I've heard that some people are able to use apps like this for Instagram, but when you're dealing with a platform, it takes time to roll out. So you're not not everyone gets a chance to benefit it with it at the same time. It just takes time. So, so the reels game. I'm gonna dive into the we're gonna talk about the reels game a little bit more. So for reels, um, like I mentioned, they're hot. Um, and it's it's a competition with TikTok, Facebook Reels, and YouTube. Um, YouTube Shorts. I said YouTube Reels, YouTube Shorts. Um, but here are some tips to get started. What you could do is when you want to do a video, and we'll kind of do a little action step together, you want to plan out your video. You want to start with a clear idea of um, what your video will be about. Think about what you want it to be about. You want to consider the goals for the message. And this is for any platform in general and when you want to do video in general. Of course, I'm going to talk about this because I'm that camera confidence guy, right? I got to put that in there. Come on now. <laughs> so, um, so you want to think about that. You also want to set up your equipment. Set up your equipment well. You know, if you hold your phone up and you do a live like this, you can do a live like this. You can get a stand for it. Like I have multiple tripods in my office. But you could also, I also like holding my phone like this because it's just easy and convenient. I could just put it up and hey, blah, 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 blah. Do my um, do my spiel, do my talk. And that's it. It's easy, it's easy, easy peasy. And then you also want to frame your shots where you can stay focused. So what I mean is I'm looking into the camera right now. I'm not off to the side. Or a certain corner, unless I'm being deliberate about that, I can do that. Um, and you also want to avoid any distractions, any clutter in the background. So if you notice for me, like if you notice for me, my background, I have this board back here. Yeah, I have this this cool thing back here. But I also, I was deliberate. I wanted to give a black box feel because my, um, I have the artist background. So I want to have that black box feel where People could feel like I'm in somewhat of a theater. But I also mix it up too. I also change my setup sometimes. Or I'll have some kind of um, backdrop, like where it says Confident Video Star Nation. That's a hook too, because sometimes I'll change that up. You know, so when I'm having some kind of background, I, I want to make sure I don't have clutter, but I also want to make sure it's cool and, and fun and dynamic. And then I also might do something cool with, with what I'm wearing. I don't want to wear stripes. I don't want to wear um, any kind of um, like checkerboard colors. I want to make sure my colors are solid and make sure it's not um, it's not distracting at all. So when we talk about clutter, that's what we talk about. We want to, we don't want to have a messy desk desk in the background or messy bookshelf. We want to make sure things are clean because what happens is people are subconsciously thinking about that as opposed to thinking about your message. Yeah. Get my water. Get my water. I dance. I dance a lot today, y'all. I danced heavy today and we had fun. But I must stay hydrated. <laughs> so that's what you want to think about. You want to use movement. You can use movement. You can pan or you can zoom in and out. For me, I don't do that. I like I like to be the zoom. I'll zoom my hands in and out. So I just like to be um dramatic like that. I like to be charismatic like that. So that's me. But you could do different things like that. You can um what you want to do is keep it short. So for Instagram, if you do a reel, it only goes to 60 seconds. So for me, a rule of thumb is I'll do 58 seconds. You know, TikTok you can do longer. Um, um, for YouTube shorts, it's about 60 seconds. Facebook reel is 30 seconds. You know, Jeff says, How do you feel about teleprompters? Ah, I think people can tell when you're reading and not really in the moment. You know, here's the thing. Honestly, for me, Jeff, I, I, my goal was to do it all because I know when I do teleprompters, I look like I'm reading it and that's okay. The reality is a lot of people talk against it and some people talk for it. So for me, I know like even people that coach me, I, I know people who use teleprompters and their businesses are doing amazing 
at the end of the day, for me, it's, is my, you know, how is it working for my business? Is it allowing me to get more, um, more customers and build my audience? Is it working for me? Because, for example, if I have a funnel, right, and I want to do a sales letter, I'm going to read that teleprompter. And sometimes I read teleprompters as well. But can I share a secret with you as well? Can I share a secret with you? So here's the thing. I can also um, kind of do something dramatic. For example, if I want to have a script with me, I can have my script and I could, one, I could put a stick, a um, piece of tape under my lens or I could have it to the side and tape it against the wall or something like that. And I can act like I'm having a conversation and I'm reading my script. People can't tell. So I could talk to myself like this. Here are five ways, five ways to build my brand in a powerful way. Oh, yeah? Tell me about it. What is it? So it's like I'm having a conversation with two people. And so that's what pe some people do that as well. Sometimes I do that. It takes more editing and more time, but it works really well. And it's edutaining. So that's what I think about it. You can, I, I'm fine with it, you know, but as you do it, like I mentioned last week, you want to think about yourself as an instrument. You could train yourself to just be, get be keep getting better with it keep getting better with it to make it look effortless, you know? Because I, I I read, sometimes I go by bullet points. Sometimes I just go off the top of my head. Sometimes I go with a teleprompter. So I love doing it all. That's a long-winded answer. <laughs> but I really think that's in, I really think that's important because I, some people say, hey, no, throw it away. Don't use a teleprompter. And what they're doing is they're hindering people from being able to express their brand, to get their brand out there. So I'm for it, I'm, and I'm, I'm also for mixing it up. And as you mix it up, you could also, I'll say this too, you could test it out and see how people respond to it. You know, look at the, for example, for, uh, for Instagram, it has something called insights. You can look at the insights and see how people are taking to your posts. So that's what I think. That's what I think. That's what I think, Jeff. So let me know if you have any other questions as far as that as well, okay? And if you have questions, feel free to type in the comment area. If you're just joining us, welcome, welcome, welcome. We are talking about Instagram, all right? So we talk about the Reels game. And so what you want to do is, you know, you could also, some people when they're doing, like if they're doing Reels or if they're doing Lives, more so Reels, they'll film themselves and they'll just do one take. Some people feel the pressure with that. You don't have to feel that pressure. You can do multiple takes, and we'll get into that too more, but I'll say this real quick. You can do multiple takes. Start something, have a framework, have a system, have an order in which you're going, and I'll talk about this framework next. So the framework you want to have is you want to get something to grab people's attention. So that's what we call the hook. You'll hook them in. You know, something that says, whoa, what's, what's that as people are scrolling? You want to be able to get their attention. So here are five ways, five ways to love your spouse in a powerful way. Here are five ways to encourage your son or daughter. Here are seven ways to build your brand where people can notice it and think you're a rock star. You know, some, you know, those are hooks that you use to hook people in. And then the next thing, the next part of that, that's one part. The next part of that is value. Some people might say value. Some people might say story. But pretty much you, you could tell a story. You can share or elaborate more on what, you're, what the hook talks about. And even with that, you can introduce yourself. Hi, my name is Carla Lean. I'm a confidence video coach, and I love working with people. Today, I want to talk about, and I'll keep going, blank. Or I can go right into it. Here are five ways where I can build my brand. Number one, what I want to do is make sure I know my avatar. Number two, I want to make sure, I want to really want to make sure that I'm able to engage with my audience and I want to find out what they need. If I find out what they need, I can more so meet their needs. That's the part two. And I can go three, four, five. And then, so that's the part. So we have the hook, we have the value or story. And then the last thing we'll have is a call to action. We want to call them to something. Or some people even say offer. You know, so calling them to something that could say, you could say, what are your thoughts on this? Comment below. And so you're calling them to take a specific action. Or you could say, follow for more tips. Something simple like that's powerful. Or you could say, 
want to hear more about it and want to know how you can go to the next level, DM me right here or comment below and say me or click the link below and they could go on to your landing page. So that's what you want to have. You want to have the hook, just reviewing, hook, story or value, and then the offer or call to action. So that's three things. I just interchange the two words for each part of it. Yeah. So, but that's very, very important because if you use that system only, if you use that framework only and you're just putting out content, you're going to get a lot done. You're going to get a lot done. So that's what you want to think about when you're doing it. So follow those tips. The next thing I want to talk about are graphics. I'll say this real quick. Graphics are still relevant. You know, for when, when you think about a platform, the reality is things happen in cycles. You know, some things will be popular. Some things will, people will get tired of them. And then they won't, they won't be effective for a while or they won't be effective again. So for Instagram, for a while, since Reels was so hot, it, it started getting ineffective to just post um, graphics. But recently it's changed. So as we're speaking today, graphics are hot again. You know, and then you could do the carousels. You know, we talked about that as well. So graph carousels are graphics as well. Just to, I just want to make sure that's clear too. So though, you know, so you can play around when you're putting out content, put out graphics as well. And make sure something that's relevant to what your avatar might want. Yeah. Notice I keep going back to avatar, right? <laughs> And then the next thing is Instagram stories. Instagram stories are important. You might hear my kids in the background. They're doing their thing. I'm su- they're doing great, actually. I'm surprised they, they're just so quiet. Then you have Instagram stories. I'm going to share this again real quick, too, to talk about the stories. So the stories are important because the cool thing about the stories is you could kind of talk about, and that's where you see it here. You, this is where my stories would be um, after I do stories. So when you and I'll, we could go ahead and get into that too when I have my phone too. But when you have stories, when you put do stories, it's like a highlight of your day. So for example, if I start my morning and I'm getting into the office and I'm so not motivated, but I'll put some music on and start dancing, right? I could put that into my stories and people can see what I'm doing. And then the next the next story can be like another snapshot of my day. It could be me brushing my teeth or me getting my coffee or me not even showing my face. It could be me pouring my coffee. Yeah? Great. I just want to make sure you guys can see that. It could also be me pouring my coffee. And then the next one could be me stepping out or me getting into my car. So you're giving people a snapshot of your day. It's like a reality TV show. And that really intrigues people. That really, what I love about human behavior is that no matter what, no matter what, we're always inspired by people's stories. And so when I think about Instagram stories, I think about my story. You're kind of telling your story throughout the day. And how cool is that? You know, so that's what you want to think about when you think about stories. So play around with it. Now, here's the thing. I mentioned before, stories, they only last for 24 hours. So for me, when I'm posting on Instagram, I don't always focus on stories because I'm using the third-party app and I don't I don't always have the time to do it. If I'm doing, I'm doing stuff for other clients and I'm also working on my own projects, so I just don't have the time. Although I could document that and put that into my stories. I might just take that challenge and do that this week. But that's what you could do with stories. So, yeah, play around with it. Play around with it. Let me ask you a question. Do you use stories on your Instagram? And how do you feel about stories? Comment in the chat area or the comment area. Let me know. At the end of the day, I think they're really cool. Another thing is, too, so we're dealing with with Instagram. You can leverage collaborations. You could collaborate with other people. You know, for example, if you're a coach, which you're a coach, and you say if you're working on, if you're a mindset coach, and you could collaborate with a business coach, and you could do it where you do like some kind of joint venture. And so if I do a joint venture with a friend of mine, a partner of mine, you know, when I'm posting stuff, I could post our conversation that we might have had on Zoom. I might post something that might be in my story. I might post part of our meeting. 
at the end of the day, I'm going to post something about my brand. And here's an example too. Like for me, when I have my son and I, we, we have our podcast, your brand expressed podcast. So we were working together, but the way I look at it is when I, we have guests on, we're collaborating with those guests. And what that means is we're posting, but also our guests are posting. They're posting uh, about that podcast and they're excited. We're excited. And we get exposed to their audience and they get exposed to our audience. So that's a that's a great example of a collaboration. Actually, it's interesting because people don't talk about that a lot. But the, I, I look at that as a collaboration. But if you have some kind of joint venture, you, absolutely, you can definitely do that. You could definitely collaborate in that way. An, another lighter collaboration. One time I did something where with a marketing, a marketing coach in Texas. So I knew that she loved dance. I mean, she loved dance. So what I did was I said, hey, blah, blah, blah. I said, hey, so-and-so, would you like to do a dance together? And we did a duo together. So I taught the choreography and I showed it to her and she did it. And she, what she did in her stories is she, she posted her process of learning it and then doing it. And then we both did it on video. That was really, really cool. So those are some ways. Ah, gotcha. So if you want, at some point, we could dive more into that as well. But for me, for stories, I, I think stories are great and they could work really, really well for you. But for me, I'd focus on the reels first. That's where you, what you want to go for and get more as, as much as possible. And I'm, you, I'm pretty sure you might be thinking of, okay, how often should I post? How often should I post? To be honest with you, different people will tell you different things. They'll tell you, oh, you got to post seven times a day. You got to post 25 times a day. Now, the reality of that is that works. That definitely works. But even if you post three times a week, you're getting more than you got. You were getting done. You know, you do what you can with the time you have. Do what you can with what you got. You know, so you can start off posting three times a week and then try to get to posting every day. That's ideal. You could also get someone to post for you. You can get um, an, an agency to post for you. Some people do that as well. But for, for some of us, we want to be able to post. We don't, we may not have the funds to have to work with the agency. So what you could do too is get a third party app, like a scheduling app. And just to let you know the app that I use, and uh, I'm not, um, I'm not affiliate of theirs, but I'll, I'll let you know, because I think they're really, really good is a company called Metricool. Metricool. That's a good company to work with. They do have a free version. For me, I have an agency version because we're working with clients as well. So I have to get content out for them and I get content out for us as well. And then I'm also exploring and I'm also I'm also I'm always geeking out and exploring. So I need that level, but you can do the free version and you're able to schedule your contact, your content. So metrical, M-E-T-R-I, cool, like cool. So that's a good one to go with. Some people also use Hootsuite, um, but I I I love. That's the one I go with now, Metricool. I, I, am, I am loving that platform. So that's something you can do as well. And by the way, with doing that, you can, you can post your reels as well. You know, Some people might teach too, when you're posting, you have to do it right there and just click that button and it goes out. You don't have to do that. You can hit the record button, save it, and then when you're ready to put it out, you put it out when you're ready to put it out. You don't have to feel that pressure. You know, as long as you get it done and try your best with it, do your best with it. And someone also asked me about hashtags. Do hashtags still work? That is a good question. Is that a loaded question? It's a good question. <laughs> because, yeah, we want to know. And here's the thing. With hashtags, I'm a fan of using hashtags because hashtags worked a lot more before. But, you know... Since these platforms get more intuitive when you're when you're typing in keywords and stuff like that, you know, so I've I've heard it said, I've heard it said that even when you're typing in the keywords, it's the platform's intuitive enough to pick it up. But I'm a fan of using pat um, hashtags. Now, some people might at some points of the year, some people might say, Hey, do three only use three hashtags or use 30 hashtags or use 15 hashtags. Reality is. I, in my opinion, in my opinion, this is my opinion. It's fair game now. 
you know, put in how many how many you want. You want to put in 30, put in 30. Um, I've heard that it's not as effective. I heard it is effective. Truth of the matter is it is different for everyone. Like when we're on these platforms, whichever platform it is, Facebook, uh, Instagram, whichever one, it's going to work differently for other people. Because with these platforms, there are different versions that are going out every day of the same platform. You know, these are these are huge companies. So this is these in and these are very intuitive. But you know, when when things certain things roll out or new things roll out, it's not gonna be the same for everyone. Everyone gets it at different times. And you know, it's not just America, it's different, it's all over the world. So think about that, how big our world is, you know. So that's what you want to think about. But for hashtags, use hashtags, you know, don't feel the pressure to use 30. Now I say with hashtags, the thing is it has to be relevant. It has to be relevant to your industry, it has to be relevant to your topic, and it has to make sense. So I can't talk about camera confidence and then I put fishing in there. <laughs> you know, that's not it don't make sense anyway, but it's not gonna work. But you have to do the research to um to just figure out. You can go a step beyond. You can go a step beyond and look at certain hashtags, look at other people's pages and see how they're performing and see how many people use them. For example, um, there was a time where if I looked up confident, you know, confident camp on camera and if it had one million um, uses for the hashtag, hashtag, it was said that, hey, don't. Don't use that specific hashtag because it's just too many people. It's too it's too saturated. It's changed now. <laughs> Six months from now, it might change. Who knows? Hey, let me ask you a question. Is my is my camera freezing up? I want to see if my camera's freezing up. I want to make sure everything's clear. I think it might be freezing up a little bit. It's all funny today. I'm having these funny issues with my with my system, my computer. <laughs> I'm laughing at it. So you so Shelby asked, so you schedule through them and then how do you post to Facebook? Isn't there a way to post both at the same? Yes. A little bit. Okay. Thank you, Jeff. Yeah, you can go to Facebook business page, right? You can do that and it's connected and there is a way that you can connect. You can connect both. And for some, it's recommended. For some people do, some people do, some people don't. There is a way to do that for sure. That's a whole separate thing, though. But if you use a, a, a third-party app like Metricool, what you'll do is you have to go on the back end and connect your social media platforms. You can connect onto it YouTube, you can connect onto it Facebook, you can connect onto it Instagram, you can connect onto it LinkedIn. You know, they pretty much you could even do um medium for blogging is pretty cool so so but to answer your question yes um there is a way to do that um but what that's what i do because time is just so short you know there's not a lot so there's only so many hours in a day i just go straight with metrical but i do have my my um at my my accounts connected you know and maybe we could talk on the back end too we could talk in, um offline to um shelby um in messenger and if you, if you need some help, I can direct you with that. All right. All righty. Yeah. How you guys feel? You still with me? If you're still with me, type in with you. Yeah, I got to do some. I think I got to do some upgrading with, with my system. It's like I'm doing, I'm getting some freezing going on my end. It's all good, though. All good. So here's the thing, too. What you want to do is you want to confidently leverage um, your camera on Instagram to reach your audience. So what we could do, what I thought we could do, and I may not be able to get through everything I wanted to get through, which is okay, it's okay. But what I want, my, my main goal is I want to be able to take some action with you guys today. How would you feel about that if we took some action today? Oh, here we go. My camera came back on. It's my camera. How would you all feel about that if we took some action? All right. So let's take some action. You guys have your phones? This is like the main thing I wanted to get to with you all. Because I feel like, you know, if we, we help each other to get to the finish line, that's what, that's what I'm talking about. That's what it's all about, helping each other to get to the finish line. 
or Jeff, as we say, to the promised land. So grab your phone and let's do this. Let me ask you a question. So what I mentioned earlier was you could just record on your phone and then put it up to Instagram after, or you can go straight to Instagram. I'm curious, which one would you prefer? If you had a choice to do either one, which one would you prefer? Some might say both. Which would you prefer? I'm just going to go for it. On my end, I'm just going to go for it and go right to Instagram. And what we're going to do is record, record a video. We're going to start with a hook. We're going to give some value. And then we're, we're going to give a call to action. Phone first. Cool. And here's the thing, too. Jeff, what you could do is you could act like you're doing it on Instagram, but do it straight to your phone. And then when you're ready, put it on out there. Ah, gotcha. Standing in line. You know, you got you to gotta multitask. You got to multitask. <laughs> so here's, let's do that. Let's practice that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my Instagram. There's a, if, if you look on your Instagram, there's a plus at the bottom. In the plus, oh, that's if I have a if this something if I if that's if I already had a recording actually. It's so funny. I've been cheating with. I feel like with Metricool, I've been cheating. I just put content out on there and, and schedule it. <laughs> that's hilarious. So what you can do? Yes, you'll go to the plus at the bottom, right? And then at the bottom, what it's going to do is going to give you. A prompt, a few prompts. It's going to say post. It's going to say story. It's going to say real. It's going to say live. I'm going to go to live. All right. So, and then on the bottom right hand side, you'll see a little two arrows. And that means you can, you can have a mirror. You can mirror it to you so that it sees you. It's not going to go away from you or be filmed away from you. So this is me. And I'm going to post something real quick. I'm going to post a hook. I'm going to give a value. And then I'm going to give a call to action. Are you ready? You want to see me do it first? Here we go. I'm about to hit that button. All right. Here we go. Checking connection. All right. I'm live. What's up, everybody? This is Carl Aline, Confidence Video Star Coach. And I'm excited to just be here and share with you and let you know that there are two ways, two ways to be confident on camera. There are more than that, but I want to give you two, two tips to being confident on the camera. One, what you want to do is look into the lens. You want to look into the lens and do it like you're having a conversation. Make it conversational, like you're speaking to someone. Like, hey, how you doing? And you can give someone a hook, value and offer. That's one way. Number two is, and it doesn't even have to be in this order, but take deep breaths. Take, take deep breaths and breathe. In through your nose, out through your mouth. Take your time. And that's how you could confidently communicate on camera. And you know what? Just because I'm feeling in the mood, I'm going to give you a bonus. I'm going to give you a bonus. Before you start recording, put on some music and just jam, groove. And have some fun. Hey. And then that helps you to get your get emotionally into the and get ready. You could be able to record and film. And so those are three tips. You want to know more? Follow for more. And by the way, this is just a live I'm doing because I'm doing a live training right now. So I'm just teaching my students how to go live. And we're doing this exercise. All right, y'all. Talk to you soon. End video. I press end video. That's it. And then what I'll do when it's time to post, I have to type something in real quick. And so I'll type in, I want to say two tips because I did give a bonus. Two tips to present on camera with confidence.
or I'm going to say confidently present on camera. And then I could, what I could do is I could type in those comments. If I could type, I could type in those things that I said if I want to. Sometimes I don't, to be honest. And then I also have some hashtags as well. But that's the hook I put in there. And I'll put what I said. I have to go over it again. So I'll save it and then I'll go over it again. And then I'll type it in if I want to. And then I'll have some hash. I'll say follow for more. And then I'll have the hashtags at the bottom. Yeah. Camera confidence. Now, my hashtag, confident video star, right? That's not popular. However, I'm going to make it popular. When I do posts, I'm going to use that hashtag. That's how I make it popular. And it's loading up. Boom. Boom. What do you guys think about that? That's it. So here's another thing I could do as far as productivity. I could batch a whole bunch of my videos. I could do that same thing and just talk about different things and just do like five or 10 videos. Just knock them out. Spend a Monday, knock them out. Yeah. I could write down those ideas. Now, if you notice for me, like I stuttered a little bit with what I was saying, but honestly, that's okay. Honestly, that's part, that's part of me. I'm not afraid to be me and show me, you know, I'm always working on my speech and in my public speaking and things like that. But I'm cool with that. That's where I'm at. That's part of the journey. That's where I'm at now. You know? So do me a favor, too. When you do it, so I want to encourage you. Here's, a, here's, a, here's the, the ultimate challenge today. I want to make sure that you get one post out. Do a video and post it. Give some value. You know? Three top tips to blank and give them. You could just say them. You know, for me, I like to, I'm conversational, so I like to ramble on sometimes. And then say follow for more. So that's my challenge for you today. And then I want you to do it, and I want you to follow up with me. I want you to type in um, the Facebook group or wherever you're tuning in from, and then type in, say, did it. Did it. I'm a star. All right? That's the challenge. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go. I know we, we hey, listen, we got this. We've got this. So... What I'm going to do is talk a little bit about, too, I'm, I'm going to kind of let you guys know a little bit about what I, I wanted to say, too. So well, I'm just going to say, I'm going to wrap it up. I'm going to say what we covered. What we covered with is we want to make sure that we're not missing the avatar. I want to make sure, we want to make sure that we're talking about the avatar. We know who the avatar is. We want to know who your audience is, know who you're speaking to, and you want to know where they're hanging out at. We talked about learning, you know, Instagram's history. It's good to know your history if you know where... They came from, you know where they're going, or at least you can kind of get an idea if this is a platform for you you want to use. We talked about the purpose. We talked about um, discovering how we could up-level our coaching business with the lives, with our videos. We talked about the Reels game. You know, you might have had questions about Reels. We talked a little bit about Reels today. We talked about graphics. Are they still relevant? Yes, still relevant as of right now. <laughs> I got to say as of right now. We talked about Instagram stories. We talked about leveraging collaborations. It's cool to collaborate with people. And, and again, I'll, I'll, I'll mention too that us having a podcast, I consider that leveraging collaborations. That's a collaboration, technically. And we talked about hashtags. And we talked about how to confident, confidently leverage you going on and doing videos. Yeah? So the last thing I'll say is, at the end of the day, you want to be able to engage your audience. Engagement with your audience is very important. So I'll talk about a few things um, and a few ways we can um, engage with our audience. So one, you want to post regularly. We did talk about the fact that, you know, hey, you, if you want to post three times a week, go for it. The more you post, the better. You want to make sure the content's good, too, and it's good value, right? And then Instagram also has features like polls. Like if you notice, so like my Facebook group, um, I, ask, I ask questions and sometimes I do polls, but I also do it with Instagram as well. 
in the stories area, there's a there's a way, a way you could do polls. And here's the tricky part because there's so many things I want to talk about with Instagram, but there's only so much time um, with the live. So I was like, I had to leave some things out. That was one of them. But polls is really helpful because that gets people engaged. And people, as people, we love to contribute, right? So that's one thing you could do as far as engagement. Um, questions. Questions are great. Open-ended questions. What's your favorite platform? Why? What are your goals for this week? What is your camera confidence goal for this week? I like doing that in my group. You know, but that gets people to engage with you. You know, and it's cool because you, it, what I love about it is you don't have to feel the pressure to make all this content. Oh, my goodness. Ah, it feels like such a burden when, you, when you're in that space, you know. So with the engagement, the cool thing is when you have tools like that, you can ask questions and, and get the information from people. And people love engaging. You know, we also talked about, oh, here's another thing, too. You could do quizzes. You know, you could say, for example, one tip for having confidence on camera is A, B, C, smiling upside down or not smiling or being angry or whatever or looking down and not looking at the camera, you know, or looking at the camera. And, of course, the the, the right one is looking at the camera. So you can do stuff like that. People engage. Um, you want, but you want also want to have high quality photos, and you could also mix with pictures you take from your camera. You know, so that's the thing that's important to uh, to understand as well. High quality photos, but also photos from your camera is fine as well. Um, you could also engage with people. So if someone likes your post, or if someone comments in your post, what you could do is say, "Hey, so uh, Joe Joe Smith might say." Wow, that was really insightful what you said. Great point. You could, you could reply and say, hey, what do you think was great about it? What stood out to you the most about it? And that's a conversation. I mean, people on LinkedIn, you know, people on LinkedIn do that as well, but you could do that on Instagram as well. You know, that's that's one thing you could do. But also you could engage with people in the DMs. And I'll say this too. I wanted, I wanted to make sure I said this. As far as engaging with people in DMs, you really want to be careful because. When you engage in the DMs, you want to make sure you're not spamming people. It's so annoying when people spam, you know. But I, I get it. People are trying to they, they want to reach out and they want to connect with people, but spamming is is, is such a no no. So, but you can authentically engage with people in their DMs. You know, if you engage, if you might see someone's post, you can say, you know, I really like your post. It reminded me of blank, and it could be something that you help people with. You know, that person, Joe Smith who commented on your post, you come and say, you know, Joe, thank you so much for commenting. I appreciate it. What do you do? And you can start a conversation. That is important for Instagram because Instagram is different from a Facebook where Facebook has Facebook groups and that's specifically made for building community. With Instagram, it's not really anything made for community, although you can leverage it for community. So the reason why I said engaging with people like that in the DMs or even in the comment area is important because that's how you build your relationship. It's very important. So that's one of the key things. Also, there is the link in the bio area. That's how people can find out more about you. That's super important because you can give a call to action to know more about confidence on camera. Check out this link for some kind of freebie and people can go to it. Last thing, the last thing I want to say, and this is super, super important, whatever platform you go with or platforms, make sure you have an email list. Email list is important because what if something happens to Instagram, things shut down? There was one time, I think it was 2022, where Facebook shut down. Do you guys remember that? And I know that was scary for a lot of people. It was scary for a lot of people. So you really want to make sure you have an email list. And with that email list, you could point people to your Instagram page. You could point people through to whatever other platform you have. So that's the last thing I wanted to say. So I hope this was helpful. I hope this brought you value. If it brought you value, please type in the chat area, value. And I want to leave you with something as well. So the next step, we're going to be doing more lives. If you, you know, let me know what topics would you like to hear about? What topics would you like to talk about? And we'll do, we go live weekly. We could tackle these topics. 
we could tackle and have conversation about these topics. If it's something that I can help and add value with, I would more than love to. So also, we're going to be coming out with our Confidence Video Star coaching program. I'm excited about that. Really excited. Super, super excited about that. So it's not up yet. We're getting there. We are getting there. If you want to find out more about it, I want you to type in the chat area, Confident Video Star. Or you can say, no, better yet, I want to be a star. I want to be a star. I want to be a star. Type in the chat area with that. All right? And I'll get back to you and give you more information. But for now, this is Carl Eileen. Thank you so much for taking your valuable time and having conversation with me. I had a great time. I hope you had a fantastic time. Uh, you all are amazing. And uh, we had a blast. Until, ne until next time, we'll see you later. Have a great rest of your Saturday. And as I tune out, I'm going to put my, my bow tie on. We'll see you guys. Take care.